Do you consider yourself an informed, independent thinker? I do. Yet all of us who watch television or scroll social media or listen to talk radio or open our mail have something very troubling in common. Our brains are constantly being manipulated by fear-based political advertising and propaganda. Let's look at why making decisions based on fear is so destructive and dangerous and what we can do to make sure we're thinking and making our choices in a rational and productive way. Dire warnings that the sky is falling are as old as humanity itself. There's no quicker and more powerful way to motivate human behavior than to convince someone that something crucial to their well-being and survival is at risk. We are simply wired that way, and it's a big reason why we survived as a species. So, what is happening inside us when something triggers fear? In the center of our brains is a tiny organ called the amygdala. It's responsible for transmitting the perception of fear to our nervous systems, flooding the body with stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, increasing your heart rate and blood pressure. You may be overwhelmed by these physical changes or not even notice them in the moment. At the same time, during a perceived threat, the amygdala fogs the function of the cerebral cortex, the main area of the brain that controls rational thought and helps us sort through our complexities to make good decisions. The amygdala can save us by giving us the boost to run from a predator or punch him in the nose, fight or flight, but it makes it harder to think well. In terms of political propaganda, some people will do absolutely everything they can to avoid the relentless pummeling by tossing flyers into the recycling bin as soon as they come in, refusing to consume upsetting media, and muting all the commercials warning of imminent societal collapse. This is avoid, ignore which is another form of flight. It sounds reasonable until you think about the cost of more people who are so turned off by fear peddlers in politics that they simply drop out of the whole process. They no longer seek information, they become cynical and confused, and then just don't vote. The more people who don't vote, the weaker our democracy becomes. And, strange but true, there is another fear-based brain phenomenon, and we now have tens of millions of media consumers in the U.S. as examples. There's something called a staged fear experience. For example, a scary haunted house or horror movie or a television channel that crafts news to provoke anger and fear responses 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and is available to nearly every home and business in the United States. These experiences not only trigger the flushed face and pounding heart and sense of dread and confusion, but also long lasting pleasure and euphoria via the brain's release of dopamine. That's right, staged fear-based propaganda can become addictive, giving people heightened senses and a feeling of, yes, a very weird kind of happiness. Like all addictive processes, this is a very, very difficult thing to break. Like all addictive processes, it can destroy families and has, and is now set to destroy all the civil norms that we once took for granted. The people responsible on all political sides for fear-based propaganda are 100% aware of what they are crafting and why. It's the easiest way to get inside your brain and control you from the inside. That sounds creepy and horrifying, and it is. It's incredibly destructive in every possible way, ruining bodies, families, communities, societies, while building power. What can we do? Be more aware of your body's response to media. Notice when something is upsetting you. Do you notice yourself getting any physical symptoms of fight or flight? Ask yourself why that particular media is provoking a fear response in you. And ask yourself this hard question. 
Have you become a rubbernecking doom and fear addict? If so, your brain and body are begging you for relief because you are wearing yourself out. Let your political representatives know that you need to hear what positive things they can do for you as a constituent rather than what awful things their opponent is doing. If we value civility and social order, it's important that we hold all politicians to a higher standard in behavior and not give in to constant mudslinging. If you don't value civility and social order, you don't value democracy. Talk to human beings about their lives. Pundits and politicians and influencers and celebrities and pimped out pastors are all pushing us to believe one way or another about America and Americans. Quite a few of them are telling whopping horrible lies. How are you supposed to know what is true and what is a threat and what is not? Try this. Make a point of getting to know people unlike yourself. This requires effort and getting out of your comfort zone. But we know that by making real connections to the other, vastly reduces reflexive fear and forms bonds of understanding, which leads to a far better line on truth of what people and cultures are really all about. If you can choose to do this, even just a little, everything starts to improve. Know your brain and yourself. We know how and why the brain functions in fear, but we are more than our primal selves. If you know that your sensible, smart self is not working properly when you are making fear-based decisions, you can regain control of the higher levels of your humanity by refusing to be manipulated by those who seek power. They do not care about you, your family, your life, your job, or your future. They just want you afraid, and then they want your vote. For your own health and the health of America, be honest with yourself and make the changes you need to and take back your brain and your life and your vote. <laughs>